What have we been talking about on Wednesday night? Prayer. Prayer. What's been the name of this series? Pray how? Be. Pray be. We've been using a acronym. What's an acronym? You take a word and you put a um, word beside each letter. Kind of, kind of go through some some parts of the Bible. Maybe we haven't visited in a while. We went through P. We talked about being what? Persistent. Always praying. How many times a day do the Muslims pray? Three. Three. Four. How many? Five. Five. How many times a day do the Jews pray? How many? Three. Say it loud. Three. Three. Muslim five times a day. Jews three times a day. How many times a day should a Christian pray? Every day. Say it again, preacher. All day. All day, always. Okay. But Adrian reminded me the other day, I think it was him, he said, preacher, you always said you put a comma. I did tell you. One of y'all reminded me that I always put a comma, I think it was Jay, at the, at the end of the sermon. Same way we pray, y'all. We're going to pray till what? We go home. Let's get used to it. What was the sermon on Sunday? Meaningful? Say it again, Sister Jesse. Meaningful conversation. Meaningful conversation. There's no more meaningful conversation, y'all, than having a little talk with who? Jesus. We have to be persistent in prayer. Where we find it hard to be persistent in prayer is when we're not seeing the results we want to see. Yeah. We want to kind of quit, throw in the towel, and not keep praying. We've been praying for you. You won this year, and maybe you ain't seeing no results yet. Don't stop praying. The Lord's working. He's working on those individuals, y'all. Trust me and believe he is working on those individuals. So, so keep praying. Um, we mentioned the, the widow in the Bible who kept um, who kept um, pressing upon the unjust judge who did not regard man nor God, and she kept pressing, she kept pressing, she kept pressing until she got what? She got her breakthrough. Mm -hmm. She kept praying. She kept praying that the Lord would give her a breakthrough. What did Daniel do? Daniel was told what? <coughs> He was told what? Not to pray to anything but that statue. What did Daniel do? The Bible says he went home and he opened his windows. He got down on his knees and the Bible said he prayed what? Three times a day. That's being persistent in prayer. Can you pray without opening your mouth? If you had a good teacher in school, they taught you how to read with your what? Eyes. Took me, took me quite a few years to grasp what the teacher was saying. But once I understood that I could be talking and not moving my lips, I'm dangerous. But I might be sitting there talking about you. I'm just playing. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Anybody remember the illustration I talked about? D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody wrote down 100 names of people he prayed for. The day of his death, 96 of them were saved. And at the day of his funeral, the last four got saved. Okay? Can we do that? Can we do that? Amen. Told Joe the other day, if a church is not a great commission church and fulfilling the great commission, you are not a New Testament church. That is the ultimate of commands. The ultimate command is not just to come to church. Come to Bible study, come to prayer meeting, or be a part of the youth first. The Great Commission is what? Reach the lost. That's the Great Commission, which some pre preachers say has become what? The Great Omission. Why are we scared when people tell us no? The Bible says Jesus came into his own and his own don't walk. Baby, no, don't scare me. You know how many times I've been told no by my one this year? The one that I'm pursuing? Every time. You think I'm going to quit? Has God quit? No. When God quits, you can't breathe. When God quits, you can't eat. When God quits, you're going to have dirt in your face. 
It's hard for me to give up on people. I refuse to give up on people. Because let me tell you something, eventually, I'm going to be like that Willie, y'all. I'm not going to stop. And I'm eventually start making some progress. That's the tenacity and the urgency we need as the church as far as prayer. We've lost our function to pray, brothers and sisters. We do not pray like we prayed when I first got saved. People don't pray like they used to pray. We don't. We did not inherit the urgency and the passion of the old saints' prayers. Y'all remember. Y'all had to. Y'all been in church long enough. Them old saints could get to praying in Macedonia. My God from Zion. The herd would stand up on my hands, my arms. I'm serious. You felt the power of God. Why? God brought them through something. We were born into the blessing. We didn't see ourselves get the blessing. Y'all see what I'm saying? We were born into it. When we had nothing, we prayed for everything. Now that we've got everything, we don't want to pray for nothing. That's, the kind, that's where we are kind of getting to today. We have to have an urgency of prayer. We still have to believe in the power of prayer. That God is a healer, he's a touch, he, he's a deliverer. That's what God does. Okay, so we need to be persistent. The next one was be responsible with your prayer life. If I regard iniquity in my heart, God will walk. He will not hear my prayer. We have to be responsible with our walk with God in order for God to move on our behalf. Make sure your heart is clean. James 5 and 16 says to do what? Confess your faults all one to another. We don't like to do that. We like to tell everybody's faults to everybody else, but we don't like to confess our faults one to another. All of us in here have faults. I don't care what kind of mask you put on on Sunday. You got faults. You got failures. We all do. We have to be responsible in that. And that's, that's why David was a man after God's own heart, right? Mm -hmm. What did David do in Psalms 51? Have mercy upon me, O God. God, I have sinned against thee, and against thee alone. You sin against three people. Who's the three people you sin against? You can sin against God, you can sin against the brethren, and you can sin against your body. Those are the things you can sin against. Don't ever forget that. You can sin against God, you can sin against the brethren, the church, and you can also sin against your body. So we need to be a people that is responsible in keeping our lives clean. Anytime somebody comes up to you, and they ask you to pray for them. They've seen something in your life. It's the reason why they come and ask you to pray. Mm -hmm. I'll get a text sometime. He said, I know you need contact with God. Will you pray for this? Mm -hmm. For sure. I've met people on the road and they say, Will you pray? Sometimes I pray right then. Because we'll forget, won't we? Yeah. Somebody has say throughout our day, remember me in prayer? I better pray it in. Because I don't, I don't pull my little tablet out and write that prayer request down. And my forgetter works. Y'all know that, don't you? I got a little brain walking around here. Yeah, he walks around here. He reminds me of stuff tonight. That's my little brain. He reminds me of stuff. How many of you know we all need some help? But I'll tell you, preach the message. I'd love for him to preach here. Everybody needs somebody. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. And so your prayers will be handled in a, in a marriage relationship. If that man is not respecting that wife and honoring that wife and doing the things that he needs to do in that relationship, your prayers will be hindered. You've got to keep that marriage relationship ticking like a clock. You don't need, you don't need no skipping. Enrique can tell you what a car, when a car starts skipping, it's normally a major problem with that car. Okay? You don't need that. Your prayers will be hindered if that relationship, again, we have to be responsible. We, we looked at a couple more places, or we wanted to go to a couple more places. If you go to the book of Nehemiah, I'm not going to go there. I'm, I'm going to give y'all a print out of this where you'll have it as a reference in case y'all teach on prayer, in case y'all go back and teach with the young people, you'll have this as a reference sheet. But in Nehemiah, when Nehemiah got the report of the people, the walls were torn down, the ashes and the smoke was boiling up. When Nehemiah, got the, when Nehemiah got the word of what was going on, what did Nehemiah do? The Bible says he fell to his face and he wept and he fasted and he prayed certain days. 
that burden of what was going on with God's people rested on Nehemiah. Have any of y'all ever felt that burden for someone or something before church? It's a real thing, y'all. It's real. And don't you think God can't do it? The first church I was ever voted on for pastor was Turnpike Baptist Church. And um, Turnpike had went through a, through a terrible split. Terrible. Big stony left. There were half the people went with him. And they were hurt. When you went to that church to preach, you could feel the grief in the morning from those people. When I stepped in that church to preach, I felt heaviness on me. And I was a very young preacher back then. Failed it, couldn't hardly preach because those people were hurting so bad. And this was a hurt, and this was a pain that it, it didn't take a week or a month to get over. It took, it took days and months, probably years for them people to finally get over that pain. It was a hurt, heavy pain. This is the kind of pain that Nehemiah feels. And Nehemiah's falling down to his face, and he's, again, he's praying, he's fasting certain days, for the people of God. What does he do in that prayer? If you go visit that prayer, you'll find that Nehemiah confesses the sin of the people. Have you confessed the sins of your children? Any of y'all's children committing sin right now? Any of y'all's children shacking up? You can confess their sins. Yeah. Start confessing them. Nehemiah confessed the sins of the, of the people. Nehemiah done that where at least somebody is praying for the people. He did. He confessed the sins of the people. Go to the Lord. The Bible says every day Job made a sacrifice for his children, y'all. He did. He made a sacrifice for his children. You know, I heard, I seen a story on Facebook. It'll be a sad day if we're up in heaven and our children come right by us being dropped down into the torments of hell. Yes, sir. No parent wants their child to go to hell. They don't. And you know what? It's the parents' responsibilities. When those children are at home, it's your responsibility. If they're saved, to make sure that they're in a relationship with the Lord. Okay? That's your time. Hey, baby, how you doing? Did you pray today? Are you still saved? How's it going on with you and the Lord? Ask them. They need to be responsible over their salvation. And so, again, praying big is about being responsible of our prayer life. And so Nehemiah interceded with confessions of sins. The book of Isaiah, turn with me there if you would, if you got your Bible. Isaiah 1 and 15. Um, there's several places in Isaiah we could go to, but the first chapter is a very powerful chapter because uh, it's an indictment upon the people of God. Now, when we think about sinning most of the time as the church, we don't think the church is sinning, do we? No. The church don't sin, do it. Huh? We don't sin, do it. You always want to help me. Huh? Out of seven churches in Revelation, how many had to repent? Five. Five churches had fell back in sin. Five out of seven. Do the percentage. Only two churches was in good standing with God. The church of Smyrna and the church of Philadelphia. Church of Smyrna, heavily persecuted church. Church of Philadelphia was the church of brotherly love. Only two churches that were in what we call in the Methodist tradition being in good standing with God. Somebody got Isaiah 1 and 15? I'll read it since I've I'm, I'm got the mic. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Some people just think that, that they can sin and practice sin and that God's just sitting up there smiling at their life. That's, that's what Christians are today, y'all. I'm being serious. They think they're getting away with sin. They think they're making progress with God because of the life that they're living, but they're not. I was talking uh, with someone today about two young men that are standing together, maybe married. And the person told me that one of the guys is very religious and that he's probably going to end up being called to preach. What's wrong with that? Mm. Huh? Mm. Yeah. What Bible are they reading from, please, Joel? Hmm? 
Yeah. Yeah. But that's where we are today. It's coming to the Lord of Holy Methodist Conference. It's coming to Burns Point Association. It's, it's, coming, it's coming to every church. It's going to be, it's going to be a child. It might be your child that I have to say no to. Are you ready for me to tell your child no? Be ready, baby. But I'm going to tell them no. He ain't no spells what? No. That's what it is. It's no. Not that that's the only sin. I've had to say no to other stuff too, trust me. That's not the only sin. Well, if you talk about responsibility again, I'm trying to move on because I'm going to get this done before annual conference. You got to go to the parable of the Pharisee and the public in Luke 18, 9 through 14. Y'all remember that parable, right? What was wrong with the prayer of the Pharisees? When he was praying, he was looking around over there at his brother. He said, oh, I'm glad I'm not like him. Yeah, I pay my tithes. I do everything right. I pray. I do all this good stuff. What was the publican doing over there? Have mercy on me, oh God. Listen, if you go into your prayer closet, justify and complaining and comparing yourself to other people, don't even pray. When you go into your prayer closet, you want to go in there in humility, y'all. The Bible says when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt us in due time. That's part of being responsible and praying being in our prayer life. How come churches don't like to get together and pray anymore? Y'all's church people, y'all say things. How come they don't like to get together and pray anymore? Hmm? Don't look at me like you're crazy. How come they don't? They ain't got time. If they ain't got time to meet as a group, are they meeting God through the week? Are they meeting God every day? How's your prayer life been this week? How's your prayer life been today? Did you forget to pray this morning when you left the house? Have you had any kind of conversation with God today? Any kind? You probably did in vain, like, oh, Lord. That's in vain. Yeah, that is. That's in vain. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That's in vain. We're not the praying people in these times that we need. We got bigger problems, we got bigger situations, but we want to meet less and still try to figure it out and hope God shows up and fix it. He's not suggesting. He's not going to show up and fix it. We as the people of God have to join in corporate prayer and pray that the power of God move in our situations. Well, laxy daisy with these issues our children and our schools and all these people have you. I want to ask you something. Do you still believe in the power of a prayer? Do you? So when I call prayer meeting, next Sunday night at 6 o'clock, you're going to be him. No, you ain't going to be him. Your favorite football team's playing, you're going to be at the house. If, if your NASCAR race is on, baby, you're going to be at the house. Because that game's more important than your child going to hell. Somebody say, preach, boy. Seriously, I'm just being serious. Jesus said, as we see the day approaching, we are supposed to come to church more. As we see the day approaching in the modern day church, we come to church less. Yeah, we'll get it done in just this little bit of time. No. Huh? Don't you get mad at me tonight? Somebody said be responsible. Somebody is counting on you to pray, and they don't even know they're counting on you to pray, Brother Adrian. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Who prayed for you when you was out of sin, son? I know, I personally know people who prayed for me when I was out of sin. I can call them by name. I knew people who were targeting me through prayer, that I would give my life to the Lord and that I would get saved. And I believe, Sister Brenda, that those prayers Help bring me to the salvation that I desire. Paul said this, my brother, my heart's desire is that Israel might be saved. Good God Almighty. And so we need to be responsible. The next is A. Somebody said agreeable. Agreeable. Turn with me to Amos 3 and 3. Famous Amos. Can I tell you a little joke? It's sad. Rebecca was in um, revival the other night with uh, Brother Ashton. And um, 
Brother Axton asked the congregation to turn to Haggai. And there was some of the congregation saved people couldn't find Haggai in the Bible. Now, them people think they're going to hell. Yeah. Personally, they have filled God their own selves. But somebody, through their, through their, through their um, pastorship, has misled those people. Brother Dwayne called out a book one night, and it ain't in the Bible. I know, he called it out of there, he And people stayed flipping pages looking for that Bible. If that was me, I'd get up out of that pew and I'd come to the altar and fall on my face and I'd say, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I don't know these 66 books. And I'm so sorry that I don't know that what books are in the Bible. I believe this. If you're going to teach those children anything, you teach them the books of the Bible. Yeah. You teach them the Old Testament. You teach them the New Testament. You go back to the true fun fundamentals of the faith. Because, baby, that's what they're going to need. That's what they're going to need. Trust me. Those are the things that they need. To know the books of the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Somebody got Amos in 3 and 3? I just want y'all to be there. I'll read it. Can two walk together except they be what? Agreed. Agreed. In your prayer life, you have to agree with God. You're not going to change his mind on anything. The word's already written. When you come to God, you're coming to God on his terms. You're not coming to God on your terms. Anybody ever in here tried to bargain with God? I have. I did the same thing Cooper. When I looked out across that lake, unsaved man, and I seen white caps about that high, I said, Lord, if you'll get me to the other side, I'll serve you. When I got to the other side, baby, I went home and ate. I didn't serve you. That's called bargaining with God. Coming to God on your terms. <laughs> Anybody know what you think about the Quakers? The Quakers used to come to church and see it and were quiet. And all of a sudden, they'd go to Quake. And they'd sit in church for hours and just shake under the power and the presence of God. Do some studying on them. They loved the power and presence of God. Loved it. We have to agree when we pray, we pray on, on his terms. Go with me to 1 John. 1 John 5, 14 through 15. Sometimes when we pray, y'all, we're, we're focusing on things. Somebody say things. And stuff. See, we don't pray about going to get an Apple uh, watch, do we? We don't. We get an Apple Watch because it looks good on her wrist, and I'm going to get me one that's going to look good on my wrist. <laughs> See, I got all y'all food. I don't have an Apple Watch. Mine's a Walmart watch. I'm going to be different than y'all. Come on, somebody. I looked at my young ones. I said, why y'all got to have an Apple Watch? I said, your phone does the job. Well, I want to be able to look at my wrist. Okay, well, that's you. Did you pray about that? No, I didn't pray about going to get an Apple Watch. It just looks good on my hand. Come on, somebody. Okay, 1 John 5, 14, 15. Hard to believe we used to didn't have your cell phones. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to what? His will. His will. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. You remember what I said last week? God has said no a many a time in our prayer life, and y'all don't know how much it's blessed us. Mm -hmm. hmm? See, your children don't understand your nose. They don't. Sister Brenda Adrian doesn't understand your nose. No, boy. No, you're not going over there. No, you're not. No, you're not crossing that road by yourself. But why were you doing it? Because you loved him? You wanted to save him? You didn't want no harm, and you didn't want no hurt, and you didn't want to lead him down the wrong path. Now, will God give you something just to teach you a lesson? Sure will. Sure will. There's some things people want so bad, God will give it to them. As soon as Sister Vicky testified about it the other night, it'll be detestable to you. It will. And you'll, you'll go through that lesson, and from that point on, you'll never start. Keep asking God for stuff that you don't really need. What's something you need every day? Somebody tell me. Water. 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 What about mercy? <laughs> what about mercy? 
See, everybody gets mercy. Everybody. Even though they don't deserve it, even though we don't necessarily want it, it's dirt. And we don't know it's dirt until our eyes are open for later. Then we see mercy. And we say, Lord, I'm, why did you put up with me, Lord? All my drunken stupors, all my clubbing, all my sinning, all my lusting, all my fornication, but yet you showed me your mercy. Mercy precedes grace. Always remember that. It precedes grace. Because grace is who? Grace is the person. Grace is the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we pray, we pray on his terms. When we pray, we pray for God's will. And when we pray God's will, y'all, we are praying a prayer that is going to help grow us up in the faith. It's going to help us grow up in the faith when we pray according to God's will. Remember what I said the other week. There are some things that you are not immediately delivered out of when you get saved. Positionally, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Positionally, you are sanctified up in heaven. But down here, you got work to do. You got work to do with your walk with Almighty God. You get into His Word, and you start becoming more like who? More like Christ. When you pray for the lost, you are agreeing with God. When you pray for hurting sister or brother, you are agreeing with God. The Bible says weep with them that weep and do what? And rejoice with what? With them that rejoice. We are agreeing with God. You cannot go to God with, 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 with an attitude that he's going to some way sway your way. You know what I'm saying? Why did Benny Hinn confess his sins here lately? Why did prayer from God say he was sorry? Because God finally got their attention on some things. Did he get it on all things? I don't know. But Benny Hinn, I mean, you could be standing up there, people that couldn't get near him. They were already falling out on their face. I remember Benny Hinn, right? Yeah. Benny Hinn confessed. I'm not saying he's right with God yet, but I can tell you this. Him and Prayer from God said some things. They confessed. Turn with me to 2 Kings. I'm going to move along. 2 Kings 20, if you got your Bible. 2 Kings 20. All this is written down for you, all I have you. I'm going to place something in your hands. That way you can't say the pastor didn't leave you. Didn't give you something. Didn't leave something with you. 2 Kings. Where's 2 Kings at in the Bible? After 1 Kings. <laughs> well, you better tell me. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. So, Second King, very familiar story. But what I wanted to point out to you was a portion of uh, Hezekiah's uh, Hezekiah's walk with God. He prayed a very powerful prayer, y'all. He prayed a prayer that some people would be scared to pray today because their walk is not in line with God's word. Remember. You have confidence when you come to God because you're praying for what? God's will to be done in the situation. And that's what we want done. Even though his will may be uncomfortable to us, it could be unpleasant, we still pray for God's will to be done. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Look at the power of prayer, y'all. Then he turned his face to the wall and done what? And prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee. Beseech is a very powerful term in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. It is a term of urgency. He's urging. When you see that word beseech, it's with fire. I beseech thee. He wasn't praying a solid prayer, y'all. <laughs> Churches are quiet today when you pray. They are. Now, I don't want y'all to get into the part of trying to have competition prayers. I've been in church services where John back there in the corner was trying to pray, I pray Bob over there in the other corner. He said, boy, when they going to stop? <laughs> I've seen it, y'all. I'm being real with you now. I am. My Lord, I, I mean, it, <laughs> we're not in competition with prayer, y'all. Prayer is something you grew into. You learn to talk to God. 
I remember the first time Waylon ever called on me to pray. Brother Clark, I was scared to death, brother. I had never prayed that much, Preacher Charles. I had prayed crisis prayers. Sinners always pray crisis prayers, like get me to the other side of the lake, and when I get there, I'll serve you. Yeah, we always pray crisis prayers. Lord, help me. The Lord, uh, um, heal my daddy of cancer. I really didn't have the right praying to God. I don't stop people from praying to God. I mean, you know, hey, if they want to pray, let them pray. But they need to get into the book and see what God says about prayer. So look at what Hezekiah did. He said, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. Hezekiah said, Lord, I have agreed with you. My life has been a good life. Can y'all pray those kinds of prayers? That's a powerful prayer. How I have walked in truth. How I have lived up to your standards. Hezekiah, if you, if you know anything about your Old Testament history, was one of the most powerful kings they were. But here's the problem. He does all of this. He prays that prayer, Sister Kathy. This, this powerful prayer of, of taking his life and saying, Lord, look at my life. According to my life and the way that I have walked, answer my prayer. Answer my prayer according to the way I walked to your truth and agreed with you. Answer my prayer. Lord, that's powerful, y'all. I'm serious. For, for, for somebody to, to say, look, look at the way I've walked. This is a man, a sinful man. It's evident here that Hezekiah had had a close walk with God. And what did God do? Well, let's go. And he said, before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and they have done that which is good in their sight, and Hezekiah done what? Wept sore. Brother Adrian, that was one of them cries. You ever done one of them cries? I bet your mom used to beat the brakes off of you. That's why you won't stop now. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't, see, we don't whip children these days. You just tap them and go on. If you ain't got them, preacher charge, you ain't beating them, son. That's the kind I got. The only problem about me, Sister Jenny, is I was the first one. And by the time he got that baby brother of mine, he was dancing around the floor, and I got snickering. Then he called snickering. He said, I'm going to give you something to snicker about, boy. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, guess what I got? I got two of them. And I needed more. But God Almighty, he was rough. Woo! Notice what he says there. Let's validate what happened here. And it came to pass, verse 4. A four, a four, Isaiah was gone out of the middle court. Now, Isaiah's come up there and said, Hezekiah, get your life in order, son. Get everybody ready. Get your paper. Get your will made. Get whatever you're going to give your sons or whatever. Get all that in order. fit to die. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah cries and he prays. Isaiah's walking back. And all of a sudden, God drops something in his spirit. God turns him around. Good God Almighty. He said, go back and tell Hezekiah. He's got 15 more years. Somebody say 15. 15. God Almighty. Why 15? I don't know. But God turned it around. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we have to be agreeable with the Lord. Very powerful thing. Let's go on to why. So we're talking about P is persistent, R is responsible, A is agreeable. Y is yearning. Turn with me to the book of Colossians. Yearning. Say yearning. Yearning is just another word for desiring. Colossians 1, 9, and 10. This is one of my prayers I try to pray every day, y'all. I'm going to give you some of my secret weapons. And it's okay if you bought it. Oh, yeah, by the way, I need to finish up Hezekiah. Hezekiah, God done all that turning around, turned the prophet around. And guess what Hezekiah done after that? He started singing, brother. He let the enemy into his camp. Julian, right after God healed him, when you have your highest high with God, be ready to meet your lowest low. Some of my lowest lows was after my highest high on Sunday morning. My lowest low would be Monday or Tuesday. Ain't that what happened to the prophet Elijah? Huh? He's called down far from heaven, ain't he? 
huh? And it's lifted up everything. He's shouting the victory. He's got victory on Mount Carmel. A few days later, he's saying, Lord, kill me. There ain't nobody else serving you. I'm Jezebel's after my life. After that highest high, he went down into the lowest of lows. Colossians 1 and 9. Are y'all there? Amen. Say amen. amen. Colossians 1 and 9. Now listen. This is a prayer you need to write out and pray every single day of your life. Pray it. If you're serious about your God and your walk with God, because I'm going to point out four things out of this prayer. I'm going to point it out very vivid to you that Paul is praying as far as the Colossian church. What does the word Coloss mean? Come on now. Somebody Google it. Google it. Google it. Go ahead and tell you tonight. Let me read this prayer. Somebody Google it. Coloss. For this cause we also, since today we heard it, do not cease to pray for you in the desire that you might be filled with what? With the knowledge of his will. We should pray to be filled with the knowledge of God's will in everything. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. Number two, he says, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk walk worthy of the Lord. Remember what I said earlier? Be agreeable. Be agreeable. He said that we might walk worthy. Did Hezekiah walk worthy? Y'all help me out. Did Hezekiah walk worthy? Yeah, he did. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. There's three, there's four W's been mentioned in this prayer. The prayer that Paul has prayed for the Colossians. The first W is to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. The second W is to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. The other W is to be fruitful in every good work. Do you consider the work that you do for God a good work? You should. Take pride in your work. I take pride in my work. I'm an aggravating boss man. When I go in front of your house, that shoulder of that road, I want you to go out there in the bed with a mow that yard. I don't want hooks in front of your yard or anything. I take pride in anything I do, whether it's spiritual work or physical work. That's the next W. The last W is wealth. He said, in an increasing in the knowledge of what? God. Those are the four W's. That's Paul's journey. And that's Paul's desire for the Colossian church. Spurgeon said this. He was questioned one time, what's more important, Bible study or prayer? And so Spurgeon would often ask the question back. Spurgeon asked that individual, he said, what's more important, exhaling or inhaling? What's more important, y'all? Exhaling or inhaling? Huh? Compliment one another on that. <laughs> Spurgeon said this you inhale Bible study and you exhale prayer. See, if you don't never study the prayers of the Bible, you will never really know how to pray. You won't. You'll be modeling some of the saints and you really don't know what they know about prayer. Because all throughout the Bible, y'all, is various people that are praying. And seeking God. From all different backgrounds. In all different situations. People are praying and reaching out to God. So yes. Both exhaling and inhaling. Are both equally important. So my question to you is. What are you yearning for? Sit in this saint's word tonight. What's your greatest desire? What is your greatest desire? What should be the church's greatest desire? Hmm? Say it again, Sister Jason. People to, get saved. People to get saved. But what are we doing about it? Hmm? We ain't doing nothing on it. No way. Do you know who does the most witnessing at this church? Do y'all know who does the most witnessing? Do y'all know? Nope. Y'all might not get this. 
You want me to pull up a Jeopardy song? Uh, 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 uh. Anybody else want to take a stab at it? That marquee sign out there. That marquee sign does more witnessing than all of us put together in this church. You don't believe that, do you? Yes, sir. That marquee sign lets people know what's going on in this church. There's a time out there. There's an event out there. Are we a marquee sign? Preach, boy. Good God Almighty. Huh? Are we? Are we? Huh? Yeah. So I've been telling y'all some stuff this year, and you still ain't listening. You still ain't listening to what I'm saying. You still ain't listening. I, 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 believe, I believe our faith is so small now that we don't think God could double this church in one year. I don't believe we have that kind of faith. Well, number one, God's not going to double it unless you're going to be faithful over the harvest. God does not send the harvest to a place unless there's someone there that's going to take care of the harvest. He don't. He don't. Whatever God sends to any church, you have to manage what God sends. So what are you yearning for? What are you desiring for? What's your deepest, what's your deepest desire right now? What is your deepest desire? I believe that changes all through our lives as we walk with God. I do. I know mine has. I know when I started preaching, my deepest desire was to preach better. No more. Preach better. No more. Put better sermons together. No more. No more. No more. Study, study, study. Fast, fast, fast. Pray, pray, pray. As you get into this ministry, though, Brother Adrian, preaching gets easier. It gets easier. Why does it get easier? Because you put so much in. That's why school, that's why you'll be more effective than me and Preacher Charles. You know what I told you the other night? Because you're going to have a deeper well to draw from that me and Preacher Charles had to draw from. Because you do have uh, education, a uh, theology degree, or whatever you want to call it. You will have a deeper well to pump. Well, I told Brother Adrian, I said, if you stick with it, there'll be times you're going to stand up and the things that you learn in school will be drawn out of you as you're standing before your congregation. Huh? Listen here, baby, I'm here, I'm here to help you. I'm here to hurt you. And when I can't help you, send me down the road. Seriously. When I can't help you, send me down the road, baby, and I go to that. Another church will get a good church member. Preacher, that's what Brother Dwayne used to say. <laughs> I like it too. Brother Dwayne, he liked that old stock clock. He's about right twice a day. Come on, somebody. I'm going to stop right there. I got three more. So, what does peace stand for? What does peace stand for? Say it loud. Listen, y'all know I don't like a quiet church, so help me out. What does P stand for? Persistent. Persistent. What does R stand for? Responsible. What does A stand for? Agreeable. What does Y stand for? Yearning. Yearning. Now, anybody find Colossus? I know y'all thought I forgot. Large, grand. Say it again. Large. Large. It, a, be, a really better definition is humongous. See, when Paul's praying this prayer for the Colossian people, Paul is wanting Jesus to be humongous in what? In their life. Because the whole book of Colossians is about the supremacy of Christ and how Christ is the very best. They don't have to go back to the system. They don't have to go back to ordinances. They don't have to go back to anything because in Colossians, Christ is the big person inside of them. Anybody got any questions now? So when do y'all want to start setting prayer meetings?